I have made so many mistakes when it comes to teaching students how to compare fractions. And if I had to guess, you've probably made some of the mistakes that I have. In this video, I'm gonna share my top four mistakes to avoid, but remember, there's no shame, no judgment. We are math learners just like our students. So it's okay to learn and grow and change your approach. Now, before we dive into mistake number one, I want you to leave a comment below and let me know on a scale of one to five, where do you feel like your students are at in their overall understanding of fractions? If you feel like your students are really lacking fraction sense, then comparing fractions is the perfect fraction concept to use to build that fraction foundation that students are missing if you avoid the four mistakes that we're gonna talk about in this video. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, let's go ahead and get the obvious one out of the way, the butterfly method. If you don't know what it is, I want you to Google it. Actually, I don't want you to Google it because I don't want you to be tempted to use it. So why did the butterfly method make the list? Because even though it is an effective series of steps to help students compare fractions, it really bypasses all thinking. Students do not use any type of reasoning when they are using the butterfly method. Oftentimes, because they don't understand why these steps work, they either forget the steps or they misuse the butterfly method using it in situations where it doesn't even make sense, or they just decide to use it and never consider any type of reasoning. They don't look at two fractions and think like, what is an efficient way to compare them? Instead, they just jump right to the butterfly method. When students don't understand why the steps work and they don't have any type of connection or understanding behind the series of steps, they have nothing to fall back on when they forget the steps and they also don't have anything to lean on to help them determine if this is a situation where it would even make sense for them to use the butterfly method. So unless you want students using the butterfly method for every single fraction concept that you teach, I can say that because I've been there, this would be a mistake that I really, really recommend avoid. Remember when I said that comparing fractions is a really great opportunity to build students' fraction sense? The butterfly method really doesn't allow that. So it is something that after teaching it with my first group of students, I marked that off as just a practice that wasn't effective. All right, mistake number two. And this one is probably gonna surprise you because y'all know I absolutely love math manipulatives. So fraction tiles, even though I absolutely love math manipulatives, they are not a guarantee for building understanding. We really have to know how to use math manipulatives in a strategic way and with a lot of intention or else math manipulatives can become a crutch or worse, provide a false sense of understanding. So when I first started teaching comparing fractions, I would have a worksheet and on that worksheet, there'd be a bunch of comparison problems and I'd give students their fraction tiles and they would model the first fraction and then model the second fraction right below it and look to see which one was longer. And then that would help them determine whether they wrote down the less than, greater than, or equal to sign. Now, I want you to think for a second about that activity that I did with students. How did that activity help them better understand comparing fractions when we take the tiles away? It didn't. Really, with those fraction tiles, they were just figuring out which model was longer. They weren't really building the reasoning or the understanding that they needed in order to be successful with comparing fractions when we removed the math manipulatives. I thought that students really got it because when I looked at their worksheets, all of the answers were correct. And so when I had them do a similar activity without the fraction tiles, and they couldn't successfully compare fractions, I didn't understand why. I wanna show you what this looks like in action so that you can see the difference between using fraction tiles in a very procedural or surface level type of way versus using the fraction tiles to compare fractions in a way that really builds students' fraction sense. So here we've got our blank fraction tiles and we are gonna model four fifths and four eighths. So let me remove the whole. We've got one, two, three, four fifths and then one, two, three, four, eighths. So if we are using fraction tiles in a procedural sense, then students just look at this, they figure out which one of these is longest, clearly four fifths is longer, so it is more, and we would say that four fifths is greater. But this isn't really pushing students to the level of thinking that we want them to have. This actually is an opportunity for us to really deepen students' understanding of fraction. So here, we've got four fifths and four eighths. Clearly four fifths is more, but why? When we look at what's the same here, both of these fractions have the same number of pieces. So here we have four 
fifth pieces, and here we have four eighth pieces. But the thing that is different is the size of those pieces. And so when we have the same numerator, the reason we can compare the denominator is because yes, we have the same number of pieces, but these pieces aren't the same size. That is why when we are using fraction tiles, we wanna draw students' attention to that, not just which one is longer, put a greater than less than or equal to sign and then move on. Instead, we want them to make this connection. We want them to see same number of pieces in both fractions, but clearly a fifth is a larger piece than an eighth. So that's why when the denominator is smaller, the fraction is bigger because the size of the piece is larger. Now, before we move on to mistake number three and four, which spoiler alert, I can guarantee you have made mistake number four. If you wanna know the five strategies you can use to help students compare fractions and simultaneously build their fraction sense, I've got a video, math mat, and some hands-on resources for you inside the Mix and Math 360 membership. All right, so mistake number three is teaching students how to find common denominators as a way to compare fractions way too early. When we do this, it becomes really hard for us to get students to use any type of reasoning once we've taught them that. It's kind of like when a student knows the algorithm and then you're trying to go back and build conceptual understanding and they're like, why do I need to do this? I already know the algorithm. Common denominators is the exact same way. And oftentimes finding a common denominator as a way to compare fractions is actually more cumbersome than just using a strategy based on fraction sense or based on reasoning. So teaching students to find common denominators is not a bad thing, that's not the mistake. But we wanna save that until the end. That is kind of like a last resort strategy when everything else with reasoning doesn't work. Are you ready for mistake number four? It's a big one and it is one that it is so easy for all of us. Even when we have the best intentions and we're really trying to focus on building students' conceptual understanding, it is so easy to fall into this mistake. And that is turning strategies into rules. What I mean by this is we take these strategies that are actually really beneficial for students, like if the numerator is the same, compare the denominator. If students have understanding behind that, that is a fantastic strategy for comparing fractions. Unfortunately, Sometimes we say it so much or we don't take the time to build the understanding behind it that it just becomes another rule. Like when the numerator is the same, compare the denominator. If the denominator is the same, compare the numerator. And students don't really understand why we can do that. In math, it is so incredibly easy to take a really good thing and turn it into a rule or set of procedures that lack meaning or lack any depth of understanding. Anytime we are trying to make something easier for students, we really need to consider if we are lowering the level of thinking that is required of them. So how do we ensure that we don't take these strategies and turn them into rules? Think about the two strategies that I just talked about. If the numerator is the same, compare the denominators, and if the denominator is the same, compare the numerator. Instead of telling students those strategies ahead of time, and then showing them why that works. Instead, give them time and experience comparing fractions where you know, the fractions either have the same numerator or the same denominator, and see if they can come up with that pattern on their own. See if they recognize that every time the numerator is the same, the fraction with the smaller denominator is always bigger than the other fraction. So we want students to kind of discover that strategy on their own, and then there's meaning behind it. So when you talk about that strategy, students have that hands-on experience to connect to. If you wanna know my top five tips for teaching fractions in fourth or fifth grade, watch the video that's on your screen right now. And if you're wondering how you can get access to that video that walks you through how to teach comparing fractions, as well as the math mat and the hands-on resources, then make sure you go to www.mixandmath360.com.